now it's time for another deep dive breakdown of the latest episode of Bad Batch from its third season titled A Different Approach. Spoilers inbound. Spoilers inbound. All right, so starting with the review, I found the episode to be quite enjoyable. I will be honest with you, though. It was a little slow to start. Early on there, Omega was kind of getting a bit annoying with her Dudley do-right attitude, but I guess we do need just some purely good characters in Star Wars, and she fills that role perfectly. And really, some of the best parts of this episode were watching... Omega, who, you know, is the do-gooder, and then Crosshair, who is Mr. By the Book, Good Soldier Follows Orders, interact with each other. You know, he the entire time was like, listen, this is our mission, this is our goal. We got to get out of here as quick as possible. And she, along the way, is like, oh, we got to save this, we got to help that, we got to pay for this, pay for that, no shooting, no killing. So it was a fun part of the episode seeing these two very different clones interact with each other. In fact, it's, it's the most interaction we've seen between these two throughout the first three seasons. I know we got a little bit last week, but this week, I mean, the entire episode was dedicated to Crosshair and Omega kind of working through their new bond and their approach to executing a mission, which is much different in their certain points of view. So I, I really appreciate that. Although, Things did drag early on. I, I mean, it was all the way up until the the gambling scene, really the end of the gambling scene, where it's like, all right, let, let's kind of let's get to some action or a story revelation, maybe some lore exploration. But once the uh, captain there kind of pulled his corruption thing and the heartbeat kicked in, uh, the episode really picked up. And where this episode obviously hit hard was in its final two scenes. In particular, the escape from Lau. That was just kind of awesome. <laughs> you know, Omega finally came around the crosshairs way of doing things and kind of said, hey, let, let's try a different approach here, which was the, the blasting one. So that was all great to see. Some fun gags in there. Wrath Tars, the captain and getting his poncho boy getting blown away that was all neat but really this episode hit hard in its closing moments with the reunion of Omega and two of her brothers in Wrecker and Hunter uh, I'm not gonna lie being a girl dad I I, I teared up watching this this was uh, the, the type of Star Wars emotions I was looking for this week definitely looking for from this show I thought it was a beautiful moment that was just perfectly accented by musical motifs from the Kiner team. I, I mean, Wreckers and Omega's uh, reunion had a specific musical motif. Then with Hunter, it kind of went into Omega's theme, and that's where I really started to kind of get teary-eyed. And then things all kind of change when it's revealed that Crosshair brought her, and then all that, all those joyful tones and music are replaced by just this eerie look from Wrecker and Hunter and, and sound from Team Kiner. So I, I thought the reunion was handled perfectly i absolutely loved it i'm i'm not so sure why they're so icy on crosshair considering last season you know he he tried to let them know like hey this is what's going on yada yada so i mean he was already trying to cross over to the good side so i wasn't expecting as icy as a reception from his two bros but considering everything that's happened over the past two seasons i, I guess it makes sense but this end really kind of put a cherry on top of this episode started slow ended very strong very excited to see where things go next all right so getting into some top moments i've got three of them the first one really being the just the tension felt during the card game in particular uh, between omega and the, uh, the the captain there the corrupt captain if you will i, I enjoyed that as well just the, the imperial corruption shaking down the bar uh, all that fun stuff, this tax, that fee, can't have pets, can't gamble, uh, just vintage Imperial stuff. But anyways, I really love the tension in this scene, in particular the musical choice of the uh, Team Kiner to just use, it, I mean it just sounded like a heartbeat, it was like a doot doot, doot doot, doot doot, as Omega was uh, negotiating with the captain over the gambling fee. So that, that kind of stood out. Finally got my heart pumping a little bit in this episode after the first you know, few scenes were a bit uh, not boorish, just not, not too exciting. Next top moment here is the escape from Lau. 
uh, it was just a cool scene. Like I said, it, it featured the, the switch in dynamic between, hey, let's do it Omega's way to we now have to do it Crosshair's way. I really enjoyed that. Obviously, anytime we get action in Star Wars, it's going to stand out. So just the, the release of all the animals and the chaos that caused and, you know, all the hijinks to get off the planet, ending with the excellent little bit that they chose to put in there by having the Poncho Trooper, by the way, Poncho Troopers, FTW, but by having the Poncho Trooper kind of just watching them take off and then get blowed away by the wash of the engines of that transport. So enjoyed that scene uh, very much so. And then obviously the reunion. And yeah, I just talked about, so I'm not going to go much more into it, but I I just thought this was handled expertly by the team, the writers, uh, D. Bradley Baker and Michelle did a great job with the voices. It just, it it felt great. I mean, it it felt like we were watching a a family get back together after months and months of being separated and really not ever knowing if they'd see each other. I mean, the lines of, hey, we crossed the galaxy four times trying to find you and then hunters like five and and then they recognize it like hey but it took you omega to find us it was just it was it was awesome it it was like this is why i love star wars for these types of feels and emotions i mean i'm i'm getting a little worked up just talking about it. it it just it was beautiful across the board and then ending on that bit of a cliffhanger with the icy reception of crosshair was also a nice touch so Hopefully, just like this episode, we pick right up next week and kind of continue on with the now reunited Bad Batch Sands Echo. So those moments were fantastic. In terms of eggs and references, this episode was pretty, pretty, pretty vapid. Um, I think it was Sabak that uh, Omega and everyone was playing there in the bar, but I'm not entirely sure. The cards kind of have those angled edges, so hey, we'll, we'll at least mention it. Um, a noticeable one, though, is at the end, the escape, when the captain meets his demise. That is a wrath tar tentacle coming out, those big balls of teeth that Han and Chewie had locked up in The Force of Awakens. And I swear, and I didn't hear him, I know we saw some other familiar Star Wars beasts during the escape, but I swear there were some Porg sounds going on. Maybe they made it off of, off of Luke's Island who knows, but I, I swear I heard some porgs. So that, that kind of wraps our eggs and references and this breakdown of Bad Batch S3E4, a different approach. If you dig this type of content, make sure to sub to the YouTube channel here. And don't forget to watch the Star Wars Time Show live stream weekly, Wednesdays, 5 p. East, right here on YouTube.com slash Star Wars Time Show. Because if you do so, the Force will be with you always. Always.